Welcome back my dear friends. Now the next topic that we are going to learn in upper limb is about the carpal bones and about the carpal tunnel formation. So I'll tell you about the carpal bones and all the important points that you have to remember about that. And then later on we are going to study about the carpal tunnel. So I hope you all know that there will be totally like eight carpal bones and all the eight carpal bones are actually arranged in the form of two rows. Okay, so there will be totally like eight carpal bones here arranged in two rows. There will be four carpal bones arranged in the proximal row and the four carpal bones arranged in the distal row. So let's see that one here. First of all in the diagram here, then we'll draw like our simple diagram. So in this diagram here, first of all in the proximal row, you're able to see the scaphoid here. So that one will be your scaphoid. And then medial to that one, there'll be lunate. And then you're able to see here, this bone will be tricutrium. And above that, you're able to see one small bone here that is your pisiform. So scaphoid, lunate, tricuterium in the pisiform. Scaphoid, lunate, tricuterium in the pisiform. These four are present in the proximal row. Now out of all these four of them, I hope you all know that pisiform is actually a sesamoid bone. Now what is the meaning of sesamoid bone? Sesamoid bone is the one which will be actually ossifying in the tendon. The bone which ossifies in tendon is actually a sesamoid bone. So out of all the carpal bones, which one will be the sesamoid bone guys? It is pisiform. Pisiform will be actually the sesamoid bone, fine. We all know that it will be ossifying in the tendon, but the important question here is which tendon? Now please look at the location. Pisiform is actually towards the medial side. If it is towards the medial side, what is the muscle that is present on the medial side here? Flexor carpi ulnaris. So this is actually going to ossify in the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. Okay, so the pisiform bone will be actually ossifying in which tendon sir? That is flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. That is about the proximal row. Now let us move towards the distal row. Distal row first you'll be able to find here trapezium. That is trapezium first. And there you are able to find the tubercle of the trapezium guys. Then there will be trapezoid. Then the largest one out of all of them will be the capitate. You can clearly see there that is capitate. And then this will be the hamate. And you are able to appreciate the hook of the hamate there. So I think all the medical student remembers that very well from first year MBBS days with the help of a mnemonic. She looks too pretty, try to catch her. You know, scaphoid, lunate, trigutrium, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitin and hamet. All these are your eight carpal bones guys. After that you'll be having your metacarpals and followed by that you'll be having phalanges. We'll do one thing. Uh, this is actually the exact diagram in the atlas over here. Now we'll try to draw like our diagram here to make the things easier for you people. In the proximal row, first of all, you'll be having scaphoid, followed by lunate, and then trichuterum, and then pisiform. And then you have got the trapezium first, then trapezoid, and then capitate, and then hamate. These four bones will be present actually in the proximal row here, and this will be in the distal row. Fine. After the carpal bone, you'll be actually having the metacarpal here, sir. There'll be metacarpal number one for the thumb, metacarpal number two for the index finger, metacarpal number three, and then the four, and the fifth one for the little finger here. Then after that, yes, each and every digit will have like three phalanges. Each and every digit will be having like three phalanges here, except for the thumb. Thumb will be actually having only two phalanges. So this is just a simple a line diagram, a block diagram to understand guys, the arrangement of all the bones in the hand. So now after uh, drawing this diagram in this manner, I think there's no confusion between the lateral and the medial, wherever you have your thumb, that will be towards the lateral side. So it makes the arrangement very much easier guys. So now let us write down the full names of this one, S for scaphoid, then L here stands for lunate, and then T for trichuterum and then P stands for PC form. Then this will be trapezium here and then there will be trapezoid and then you'll be having capitate and finally the hamate here guys. Okay, in the proximal row and the distal row. And your favorite mnemonic, how can we forget that one? So it's like she looks too pretty. Now, if she's too pretty, why to leave her? Try to catch her. So, these are the totally eight carpal bones arranged in two rows, so the proximal row and the distal row. Perfectly done. 
Now here, first of all, let me tell you few direct questions. I mean to say few points to just to memorize, guys. Now, out of all these eight carpal bones, which one will be the largest carpal bone? The largest carpal bone will be capitate. Then, which one will be the smallest carpal bone, guys? The smallest carpal bone will be your pisiform. And then, which is most commonly dislocated? The one which is most commonly dislocated will be lunate. And then, which is most commonly fractured? And that's scaphoid, which every student will be knowing, guys. Fine. Now, the important thing, out of all these eight carpal bones, which will undergo avascular necrosis, already given in the exams? And that will be the scaphoid. Scaphoid is the bone, is the carpal bone which will undergo avascular necrosis. And not only that, in your PG exams, they have even given a question where avascular necrosis, we already know scaphoid, but they're even asking in depth which part of that one. Will it be like proximal part of the scaphoid or distal part of the scaphoid? So please remember, it will be the proximal part. Proximal part of the scaphoid. And then lastly, the one which we already have discussed, out of all the eight carpal bones, which will be the sesamoid bone, and that sesamoid bone will be pisiform, and it is going to ossify in the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris. So these are like certain direct questions that I want you all to you know just memorize. Why? Because these will be just slipped in in between the questions, guys. Okay. So which is the largest one? That is capitate. The smallest pisiform. Most commonly dislocated lunate. Most commonly fractured scaphoid avascular necrosis, proximal part of the scaphoid and then finally which is the sesamoid bone that is your pisiform. Perfectly done. Now once you have understood the arrangement of this one guys, now let us try to understand like how will be the carpal tunnel uh, like carpal tunnel and how are the structures arranged inside the carpal tunnel and how it is formed. Now guys if you observe all these eight carpal bones over here, if you are able to observe these eight carpal bones over here, all these eight carpal bones are not arranged straight here guys. If you are observing properly here, these are there will be actually a concavity in the front here. There will be a concavity here. To understand that more clearly, you can just do one thing. Just cut it transversely from here. And after cutting it transversely, you can just observe from here. So if you see there, all your carpal bones are actually arranged in the form of an arch. There is nothing but the carpal arch. And suppose if this is like your carpal arch here, cover that with a retinaculum. That is your flexor retinaculum. And this is no more like an arch now. Now it becomes like a tunnel. And this tunnel is referred to as carpal tunnel. Let me show you one picture here. This is what is the flexor retinaculum, guys. So you can see here on the lateral side, you'll be actually able to see the hamate here, the hook of the hamate, and this is the pisiform. And on the medial side, there will be hamate and pisiform. And on the lateral side, you're able to see the trapezium, and this one will be the scaphoid. Trapezium and the scaphoid. And in between them, you are able to appreciate one retinaculum here, that is your flexor retinaculum. And because of this flexor retinaculum here, what is going to happen? Yes, it's going to become like a tunnel here. And this tunnel is referred to as your carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel, guys. Fine. So let us now do one thing. Let's take a transverse section of this one. And then let's see which structures are going to go superficial to the flexor retinaculum and which are going deep to the flexor retinaculum, guys. So basically, now we are actually going to study about what? We are going to learn about the carpal tunnel now carpal tunnel. Imagine that this one here will be the trapezium bone here. Fine. And this one here will be the trapezoid. And then the capitate. And then finally here will be the hamate. Trapezium, trapezoid and this one here will be the capitate and then the hamate. Now in the hamate you will be actually having the hook of the hamate. And the trapezium will be having the tubercle of the trapezium. But believe me, you don't have to worry about all those things, guys. So don't try to waste your time in learning about all those silly, silly things like hook of the hamate and tubercle of the trapezium. They will never ask you in the exams. So just learn about the trapezium and the hamate bone, name of the bone at least, more than enough. Now, these are actually arranged in the form of an arch here. Now, this arch, we are actually going to close here with the help of a retinaculum. And this retinaculum is referred to as flexor retinaculum. So what is this retinaculum here, sir? Flexor retinaculum. Flex retinaculum. Perfect. And now, whatever you are able to see below that, you are able to see like a tunnel there. And that tunnel is actually referred to as your carpal tunnel, guys. That's our actual topic right now. That is a carpal tunnel. But sir, what is the thing that we have to study here? 
See, whenever you have a flexor tenaculum, there are certain structures which are going like superficial to flexor tenaculum and there are certain structures going deep to flexor tenaculum. Superficial and certain structures are going deep to flexor tenaculum. So we got to learn like which structures are moving superficial and which structures are going deep to the flexor tenaculum, guys. So already we have discussed that there will be a nerve which is passing superficial here. That will be your ulnar nerve. Fine. So if the flexor tenaculum is present here, ulnar nerve is the one which is going superficial. Whereas median nerve is the one which is going deep to flexor tenaculum. So somewhere here will be your median nerve. And along with the ulnar nerve, you also have the artery here. That will be your ulnar artery. Ulnar artery there. Okay. Fine. And then there will be like only and only one tendon which will be passing superficial to flexor tenaculum. And that tendon will be palmaris longus tendon. And we have discussed about that one guys. Palmaris longus tendon is the one which will come here and get inserted into the flexor tenaculum and superficial surface of flexor tenaculum only guys. Fine. So let us just write down the names of all these structures here. So what is this nerve which is going superficial here? That's your ulnar nerve. And then there will be one artery which is going from here sir. This one will be the ulnar artery. And then there will be one tendon here. This tendon will be the palmaris longus tendon. Palmaris longus tendon. So ulnar nerve, ulnar artery and the palmaris longus tendon. These three are the structures passing superficial. Some more structures which, uh, which you have to actually learn in depth here. You remember about the supply to the skin on the palmar surface. The skin on the medial one half digit is supplied by ulnar nerve. And the skin on the lateral three and a half digit is supplied by median nerve. So what is the name of that nerve? Obviously, if it is supplied to skin, it will be cutaneous nerve. That to palmar cutaneous nerve. Now, ulnar nerve will be actually giving one palmar cutaneous branch here. Supplying to the medial one and a half. Well and good. But median nerve, we have already discussed, even though median nerve is going to pass deep to flexor tenaculum, but the palmar cutaneous branch given by the median nerve is going superficial to that one. The palmar cutaneous branch is going actually superficial to that one, guys. So here will be the palmar cutaneous branch will be the of the median nerve. So this one here will be the palmar cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve. And this one here will be the palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve. Median nerve. And all these are the structures which are going to pass superficial to flexor retinaculum. All those are the structures passing superficial to flexor retinaculum. Don't make it like a paragraph, don't make it like a list, no mnemonics, nothing. Try to apply the concept. Okay. And all this has been already completed in the previous topics. So if you learn all these topics, this will become like damn easy for you guys. Next one. Now on the lateral side, what is going to happen? The flexor retinaculum is going to give rise to a slip here. I mean to say it is going to split and one of the slip is going inferiorly. And from this space, there will be one tendon passing here. Now what will be the name of this tendon? First of all, the tendon is coming from the anterior compartment. And if it is anterior compartment, nothing but flexor muscles. And look at the diagram and try to understand. It is transverse section, that two on the lateral side. Lateral side. Flexor, flexor carpi radialis. So this here will be the flexor carpi radialis tendon. Okay. And the importance of this one is it's neither passing superficial to flexor tenaculum or it is neither passing deep to flexor tenaculum. It's going through the flexor tenaculum. So that is something important regarding this FCR. It is through flexor tenaculum. So it is neither superficial to the flexor tenaculum nor deep to that one, guys. It's actually going through the flexor tenaculum. Perfectly done. Now, the last and final thing is what are the structures passing deep to that one? Again, the same thing, try to recall the muscles. In the anterior compartment, you'll be having flexor digitorum muscles. The flexor digitorum muscle, the tendon will go here, divide into four tendons and insert into the fingers or the digits here. The flexor digitorum. Now that flexor digitorum will be of two types. One will be like FDS, another one will be FDP. Flexor digitorum superficialis, and flexor digitorum profundus. So when I'm taking a section here, obviously I have to find like four tendons above and the four tendons below there, the FDS and FDP guys. So you'll be able to find the four tendons of FDS above and then there'll be four tendons of FDP below like this here. So this will be the flexor digitorum superficialis and this here will be the flexor digitorum profundus. 
FDB. Then the next thing, without any doubt, what is the name of this nerve, guys, which is going to pass through the carpal tunnel? That's the median nerve. That's the median nerve. And finally, one more tendon is passing here. Now, where is the tendon going? That tendon is passing here from here and going to your thumb. And it is coming from the anterior compartment, flexor. So it is flexor pollicis and it is a long one. Flexor pollicis longus. Flexor pollicis longus tendon. Okay. So this one here will be the FPL. Flexor pollicis longus tendon. And remember, my dear friends, all these structures are going to pass deep, deep to flexor retinaculum. Or else I can also call this one as passing through the carpal tunnel. Passing through the carpal tunnel, guys. So by this, in one simple diagram, we have seen all the structures passing superficial to flexor retinaculum and the structures which are passing through the flexor retinaculum and the one which are deep to flexor retinaculum or we can say through the carpal tunnel. So that completes the topic of carpal tunnel here in the simple and easiest manner, in a conceptual manner. So the best way to learn this one, try to follow all the topics, all the videos in a sequential manner, then this is nothing. This becomes just like a cakewalk, guys. So that's all about the carpal bones and the carpal tunnel and the structures superficial to that and deep to that. Done. Thank you.